Welcome back to another video on my channel and today I want to review the most special macro lens I've ever shot and had in my hands and that's the new Canon RF 100mm widest open aperture is an f2.8 and this macro lens as I said is so special that it deserves a longer review and of course a macro shooting here in the studio and now let's kick off the video. Let me start by explaining my setup here and what you see in front of you. First of all, we have here the Canon EOS R5. That's currently the flagship camera, if you forget a moment about the brand new R3 in the Canon lineup for mirrorless cameras. It's a full frame sensor, it's a fantastic camera. I've reviewed this camera many times on my channel. Second, I've mounted here the brand new Canon RF 100mm f2.8 on the EOS R5. And as said, this is a very special lens for various reasons. Then on top of the R5, I have mounted my Atomos Ninja 5 Plus just to record what I'm doing in terms of settings and in the menu of the camera so you can follow that. And then here basically I have a product photography tent with some illumination with LEDs and that's placed on the box of the macro lens because I needed to lift this up to actually get a better perspective and field of view here for the camera and that is all placed on a product table for macro and product photography. So all in we have a very complex setup this time in the studio in order to present this new macro RF 100mm lens. And the situation for the tutorial I want to simulate and explain is a situation where a client demands from you to set a certain product in scene. And the product I'm using for that demonstration is a very rare, very special Omega watch which just hit the market about a year ago and it's almost impossible to purchase that watch the secondary market price of that watch is now three times of the price listed originally and it's the Snoopy Silver Award 50th anniversary watch, a homage towards that legendary moon mission many years back. The mandate from the client is to shoot product photos of that watch so that a potential buyer can actually see what this watch is all about and how beautiful it is. And we'll also do some time-lapse videos again with that macro lens in the macro mode and basically set this watch in scene. And beyond that, I will also show at the end of the video a lot of other sample photos so that you see what this new macro lens is capable of and will demonstrate to you various shooting situations in flowers, macro, all these kind of applications and fields of applications you have for a 100 millimeter macro lens. Let's quickly look into the lens and the elements of the lens. And the first element we have here is a control ring. That's kind of standard for Canon RF lenses and you can set this up in the menu. And I've set up mine here to control the aperture because as a Leica shooter, I find it very natural to control the aperture by a ring on the lens. The second element here is the focus ring and the focus ring is very smooth, but has a reasonable resistance. And I personally like that because if it turns too easily, it's very hard to control and to get a precise focusing done. The third element is a control ring, which is currently locked because there is a lock unlock switch on the back side of the lens. But the label, which you hardly can read here, says SA control. And SA stands for spherical aberration and is a built into the lens mechanism to control the appearance and softness of your fore and background blurriness or your bokeh. And that is something I've not seen before built in in a lens. It's very innovative. I'm going to show what this means in a couple of sample images not related to the Omega watch shooting at the end of the video. Then we have here three switches. The first one is a focus range controller. So you have full range, you have 0.5 meter to infinity and you have the close up distance 0.26 meter to 0.5 meter. And by the way, 0.26 meter is also your minimum focusing distance and that brings you really, really close to your subject given that this is a focal length of 100 millimeter here. Then we have a switch to basically change from autofocus to manual focus. Very often on macro lenses, I actually go for manual focus, but you can go for autofocus if you want. Also in the range you want to choose here in that focus range limit switch. And then we have your optical image stabilization on or off. The lens is not overly heavy. It has a bit more than 700 gram. So it doesn't contribute a lot of weight to your camera body here. And for a 100 millimeter macro lens, I think the weight is totally acceptable. The filter size of the lens is 67 millimeter, which is also standard. And all in the build quality is weather sealed 
and it's a very robust, very solid construction. What's very special about that lens, besides the spherical aberration control, is its magnification. And a typical macro lens, if it is a professional lens, has a magnification ratio at the maximum of 1 on 1 or 100%. This lens here actually has a magnification of 1.4 times, which is very special and really helps you to set big in scene small subjects. In order to illustrate what a 1.4 times magnification really means, let's go back to a one on one magnification for a moment and imagine a subject which is so small that if you would open the camera and the shutter and place it on the sensor of the camera, it would fully fit. And if you do that and you have a one on one magnification, let's say at the minimum focusing distance, then the size of that subject in the image is the original size and it's a one-on-one -on -one replication which is mirrored through the lens onto the sensor. Now if you have a 1.4 times magnification, you go beyond that and that means you have a true magnification beyond the dimensions of your subject and you can really enlarge it by the 1.4 times magnification and that is something which you hardly see in macro lenses, there is one exception actually from Canon, which I know it's a five times loop lens and uh, it was built for the EF mount from Canon and it's very hard to focus with that lens. And there are some Chinese brands who also go beyond one on one, but typically one on one is the best you get on macro lenses and 1.4 times is very special because it's a true genius magnification. That's all I wanted to say to this lens. And now let's go into the live shooting and let's set this beautiful Omega watch in scene. I'm recording now through the Atomos Ninja 5 and I want to show first I'm on metering mode here, spot metering, which is typical for macro. I want to have a self timer. I want to shoot in raw, of course, it's a one shot here and the autofocus is basically spot and that's what the parameters are we are going to use. Even at an aperture of f14, zooming in shows how shallow the depth of field is. So the hand is fuzzy, but the clock face is pinpoint sharp. That's typical for a longer focal length like 100 millimeter in a macro setup. And I actually had to stop down to an f18 to get in a single shot everything sharp, the hand and the clock face. So here's the first single shot of the watch. We see here the camera specification, EOS R5, RF 100mm f2.8 and macro, built-in image stabilization, which you don't need if you do it on a tripod as I did, with of course the self timer and some delay before the shot is taken. It's close to 45 megapixel, exposure time is 0.8 seconds and as said before, it needed me to stop down to f18 to actually get a depth of field wide enough to get everything sharp. It's shut at an ISO of 100. Now if we look into that and I zoom in or crop in to 100%, you see this is a pinpoint sharp picture. Let's scroll up here a little bit and you see the bracelet super sharp with the structure on it. You also see that this watch is pre-worn. It has some traces of use here, of course, and you see the clock face super sharp. The hands super sharp. You see the engravings on the clock face. I think this is really the first thing I can say about this new macro lens for the Canon RF system. It delivers super sharp, tech sharp images. The Canon EOS R5 has built in focus bracketing and I used it here and opened the aperture wider and then I had to find the point closest to me, closest to the camera where I want the focus bracketing to start and then the focus bracketing works its way through the three dimensional space away from the camera, layer by layer and takes more and more frames, which you can later stack together. And that's a very tedious procedure. I used a lot of manual focus here in order to get things sharp and the huge magnification you get in the live view in order to get this done. Once you have found by manual focusing your near distance focus point, and this is then also the start for your focus bracketing sequence, you can actually open the menu in the Canon EOS R5 and get an automated procedure for that. First of all, I enabled focus bracketing. I can choose the number of shots, 50 in this case. I can choose my focus increment and that's a bit tricky to experiment what the best is for your shooting situation. Here I went for small increments, so small steps among the 50 frames because the watch is not very thick and I don't need to cover a lot of ground. I also did choose the delay before the sequence actually is shut. And you see here the timer counting down by 10 seconds and then the sequence starts and 50 frames will be taken with focus shifted in tiny little increments from the point where I had my first focus point away from the camera towards infinity. 
taking all these frames. This brings a little more sharpness, but what I thought is I have a magnification ratio of 1.4, so why not getting even closer to the watch and using that magnification for detail shots, again with focus bracketing of that wonderful Snoopy watch. The software I used for stacking these 50 frames is Helicon Focus. It's a software I showed from time to time on my channel and delivers wonderful results. So here's one of those detail shots I took and uh, again based on focus stacking or focus bracketing with 50 frames and the quality and sharpness, the level of detail you get in these images is really knocking me out of my shoes. So let's zoom into 100%. Let's start at the top here and you see so much detail here now in the way this watch is made. And if you look here on Snoopy, for instance, 50th anniversary, this is just fantastic. Look at the wand here. You see all the structure, everything you might want to see, you see in that picture. And uh, I think the way these images are produced is a bit, let's say, effort heavy. But at the very end, you get awarded by fantastic image quality here. Look at the structure on the clock face, quite nice. So I like a lot what I'm seeing here. And I think, again, this is proof of evidence that this macro lens, this new 100 millimeter macro lens is really capable of taking super detailed shots if you use the right technology and that the magnification also goes beyond of what you typically have on a one-on-one -on -one macro lens. Clearly on the Canon EOS R5, you can also use that new macro lens for macro videos. And this is an 8K resolution video taken on the EOS R5. So you can get very close in Premiere Pro in post and don't lose any resolution or sharpness. One of the coolest features of this Snoopy Omega watch is that on the backside of the watch, Snoopy is sitting in a lunar module and traveling through space and that planet Earth is rotating here. And that is something I captured here in a time lapse again with the EOS R5 and this new 100 millimeter macro lens. I think it looks pretty cool. Clearly a time lapse of the front side of the watch looks equally cool. And then combining the two into one presentation for that potential client we spoke about in the intro of the video looks as follows. The recipe for sharp macro still images and macro videos with this 100 millimeter macro lens really is precise focusing and then for still images, focus bracketing. I also applied focus stacking to other subjects like here for a bouquet of dried flowers. And uh, if we crop in here to 100%, the level of detail and sharpness is just mind blowing. So this is really going beyond everything I've seen before. It's really cool, looks really, really good. Moving on maybe to the next frame here, the same experience. If you look at these leaves here, the level of sharpness and detail is just absolutely fascinating. And whatever image you are shooting with that macro lens, you can crop in deeply get high clarity, high sharpness. You can print this in large dimensions, whatever you want. It's an absolutely fantastic, amazing macro lens. And just to round it up, let's have a look at a few other shots, you know, also with insects and other tiny little subjects you might have and want to take photos of with a macro lens as capable as this one here. Last but not least, let's quickly discuss this spherical aberration control ring 
I showed earlier in the video. First, what exactly is spherical aberration? So aberration generally is a property of an optical system. In our case, the optical system, of course, is a macro lens here. And aberration is the root cause for light spreading out over a region instead of being focused on a single point. And this will introduce a certain level of fuzziness, we'll go deeper in a moment, which means it is not sharp because it's spreading out over a region instead of being focused or converging into a point. And then spherical aberration is that type of aberration that takes place in lenses like we have it here, because these are so-called spherical lenses. Second, Canon gives us already very good hints in the manual of the lens when we go into the chapter on the spherical aberration control ring. And it says here it can be used to adjust the bokeh style or background blur and get, and that's important now, you will see this in a sample image in a moment, a soft focus effect where the subject is made to look softer. And then there are two options here. You can turn this towards the plus sign or the minus sign and depending on what direction you choose, you get different effects and they can look very artistic as you can see in a moment in the sample images, but I should already say I didn't use it that much because for me the main feature of a macro lens is exactly the sharpness I showed before in the sample images and not so much this artistic soft look and feel as we see it now in the sample images in a moment. In order to illustrate quickly the difference what happens to an image if you change the SA control ring, I have three images here on the lower left hand side. This is my image with SA equals to zero. So no change to the control ring. This is the image with SA equal to plus two. And this is the image taken with SA equal to minus two. Now if you look at that, let's go back to the original. If I zoom in here, this is a pretty sharp image. And actually if I change spherical aberration control to plus two, so we go to that image here, it is still very, very sharp and looks very, very good. Now, if we go back here from SA equal to plus two to SA equal to zero, where everything was reasonably sharp and we change now to SA equal to minus two, then the subject, which is in focus, becomes super soft. You still see some structure here, but it's a very soft look. It's almost artistic, or maybe it is artistic in the way you saw in the manual I showed before, from Canon on this RF 100 millimeter lens. And that is not a look I'm typically after when I take a macro lens to take shots. But for some people, this might be exactly what they are looking for. And they might appreciate maybe if they can change from SA equal to zero to SA equal to minus two. And uh, for me, that's not what I'm using typically. That's why I didn't gain a lot of experience with it. And of course, going from SA equal to zero to plus two to minus two also changes the appearance of depending on whether you're on plus or minus what's before the subject or after the subject in terms of blurriness and softness in the same way as it was described in the manual. This brings us to the end of my review of this new macro lens. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There is always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.